Hey guys, and welcome to the Star Citizen News, each week taking a look at what's been happening in the Star Citizen community, as well as the official videos that CIG have been making, and compacting them all together into a space nugget of sim gold. I got those words confused on the wrong way around, but it's okay, we'll continue this time for the week ending the 23rd of October. Free flight week call until the 31st. You can fly free in the Star Citizen universe, even if you don't have a game package, um, with a Super Hornet until the 31st of October. Um, all you need to do is um, follow the link in the description below. I've also got a video on how to do it. Uh, and if you just go onto the RSI website, there's a link at the top that literally just goes, have a Super Hornet to fly around until the 31st with. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, and obviously people that don't have the Super Hornet but have a... Uh, have an account already, you can also try that too. The Herald had a little tiny sneak peek in a newsletter. If knowledge is power, then the Drake Herald can exert its authority unlike any other ship. Get a glimpse of this ship and its high power broadcast away in this week's sneak peek. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm really actually looking forward to the Herald now. It's um, slowly grown on me uh, like a fungus. Um, Star Citizen has been nominated for a golden joystick for most wanted game. Uh, there's a link in the uh, section below that you can go there and have a look at that and vote for it if you want for the best damn space sim ever. It's worth doing if you want to support Star Citizen because more rewards mean I know more exposure for the game and more exposure for the game is good. Uh, the anniversary live stream. So CIG's next big event is the anniversary live stream on Friday the 18th of November. There should be a new concept cell coming around this time too. Uh, that was confirmed by Ben on Batgirl's show. There is a lot of stuff that could be shown or come out at that same time too. Obviously, everyone's after 2.6. We want to see that Squadron 42 demo, um, more 3.0 stuff. It's likely that we'll see possibly more behind the scenes about Squadron 42, meeting some more actors maybe, that's what they did last year. I'm very much looking forward to it, but we'll have to wait until Friday, the 18th of November, as I said. Um, so, we found out some other bits and bobs from Batgirl's Ben's Day uh, that she does with Ben Lesnick. Um, seasons are being looked at, uh, they're working on some tech so that we can have seasons on clients. I suspect that is something that will happen later, but... CIG continue to surprise me. The roadmap uh, was rough uh, on the ships that we saw on CitizenCon. A bunch of ships were left out that will be scheduled throughout the year. Um, there are also bikes and other vehicles that we will see in the future for ground um, planet. We'll talk about that in a second again, actually. Um, there is no Polaris in Squadron 42 Episode 1, as it hasn't been invented yet, effectively, in law. Um, and we'll come to that again in a second as well. Uh, alien player characters are a distinct possibility in the future, but nothing on the short-term plan. And the Devaran, they kind of have a look now that we just haven't seen it yet. Ben has seen it, and he was excited about it. Let's move on to Around the Verse. Um, this time it was a UK focus and they started talking about the Polaris Corvette. As part of the RSI pipeline, the Bengal and the Kwani helped shape that Polaris. It feels very much like a submarine. They've blocked out large areas and sections of it already. Obviously their pipeline's pretty solid now. Uh, it can hold a ship as large as a Sabre inside as well because it's got that hangar bay that does raise up and all that sort of cool jazz. P a little bit excessive for my tastes. Uh, it is a quick um, kind of torpedo salvage military focus vessel and they look at the bridge and they talk about the recessed workstations so that the captain can kind of look in on anyone from behind without them noticing uh, and there's a gangway that extends to the front of the ship it's a pretty cool look the polaris is supposed to fill that void that hole that the idris left when the idris became a frigate they wanted some corvettes in the verse but obviously they're not going to appear in squadron 42 episode one um, as in law they haven't been created and squadron 42 is before that Let's take a look at the camera tools um, that the CIG are now talking about. So this is an exciting addition for content creators. They're improving their camera system and adding a better tool set for them um, that's going to be a lot more um, uh, bespoke. We can kind of change it. It's all becoming a single unified camera system between deaths and lives and, and watching other people and all that sort of stuff. So we'll have better control and movement of how the camera works and looks. We're going to be able to change the lens size and move the angle of the cameras. We're going to be able to zoom in and out and this can all be saved. Uh, the idea is to have a tool set that gives content creators and amateurs and enthusiasts and anyone the ability to make some great videos, screenshots, or to have a more cinematic experience tailored for them or what they want to do. 
the Urza Rover. So they talk a little bit about the Urza Rover. Um, it can fit two people in the front or four people in the rear. Or instead of people, you can have cargo units. So four cargo units in the rear. Uh, it has that top gun that's controlled from the front too. Uh, there will be more ground vehicles in the future as well. Um, there's different materials will cause the physics driven wheels to behave differently obviously it exerts force downwards um, it prefers rugged ground so on dirt and stuff it's quite you can feel it pulling it up it's, it's pretty cool the Urza Rover will be coming out in Alpha 3.0 as well the Javelin Wreck so the Javelin Wreck was made from a pristine Javelin effectively then they broke it down, applied shaders and various techniques to make it look worn down by sand and the desert and to uh, make it look like it had been there for a, a while and then obviously reinforced into some form of home for those nomads. This gave them a great understanding of how to damage capital ships in the future as well as making more wrecks and gave them lots of techniques that they wouldn't have otherwise used. Uh, an interesting issue for them as well is that because everything's sim-driven, the planets revolving around the sun and rotating on their axes, Times of the day and night are different from planet to planet, um, so they're, they're working on bits and bobs for that. Uh, also, they're still working on the space-worthy javelin, as it were. There's two internal areas that still need to be done. Uh, one is cargo. Um, uh, I suspect that as the Idris, it still probably has some missing items from it, like doors and props as well. In RTV, there was a little bit of talk about the Bengal as well, in reference to them building out RSI capital ships. Uh, there, there's hangars, there's a bridge with four stories and an additional two above that as well. Uh, there's corridors, a ready room, habitation, toilets, showers. There's lots going on with the Bengal um, and obviously it's a massive undertaking as it is basically several computer game levels. Uh, Homestead sounds. A lot of work went into uh, the sandstorm and other sounds for si the Citizen Condomo. The idea is that they wanted to have sounds procedurally generated when needed from appropriate locations. So sounds don't need to be manually placed. They are generated from whatever's happening in the area and they don't sound like they're from a static source. They're actually coming from the source that's moving or whatever. So this could be a rattle uh, of the javelin as the sandstorm passes or maybe a ship flying overhead and um, causes different sounds and vibrations or even the vibrations or the sound from being attacked on the capital ship but the attack is happening at the other end of that capital ship. The music logic system is going to take into account weather, um, planet type, biome, if it's day or night, what's happening to you at that current time, are you fighting or whatever, to generate its music and ambient music. It should give you proper ambiance to your situation. Uh, a quick other couple of notes, uh, things from like RTV I suppose. The Redeemer um, has been talked about. It needs bringing up to standards of their new ships and the new ship system. Obviously it wasn't created by CIG. It needs their component system, the damage system, and a general rework to get it flyable. The Redeemer at the moment is just like a, ha uh, a model in the hangar that needs to be reworked basically. Uh, the Staff Era will be getting a chair in its captain's quarters. And that's basically it for the news this week. Remember that I stream Star Citizen every Sunday and Tuesday now. Check out my Twitch page for more details on that. Every month you can also win a Star Citizen ship just by commenting on any of our Star Citizen videos uh, that month on YouTube. A special thank you to my Patreons and to my Game Wisp supporters. You allow me to um, do a lot more with the channel. It really helps me out. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Like, genuinely, thank you so much. Please tell me uh, what you're hoping to see from that anniversary live stream on Friday, the 18th of November. It's, uh, is it 2.6? Is it a new ship? Is it the Squadron 42 demo? Is it none of that? Is it more than that? Please don't forget to like and subscribe, as it genuinely helps me so much. Love your faces, and I'll see you in the verse.